So in the last video, what we did was we just laid the foundation that if we're gonna develop enterprise solutions, we have to start thinking like a software developer. And software developers go through this life cycle, requirements, design, development, testing, and maintenance. We're gonna go ahead and focus on design and development real quick. So what we're gonna start talking about now is I'm gonna develop an enterprise solution. In this example, we'll just go ahead and say we're developing an enterprise class MES system. It could be SCADA, it could be anything. But in this case, let's say we're building an enterprise class MES system. So what is an enterprise class MES system? An enterprise class MES system is I have my parent company, Acme, and Acme owns many facilities, but in this case, we'll say we have three of them. Each of these facilities are in a different business unit. So this may be business unit one, business unit two, and business unit three. These guys make screws, these guys make bolts, these guys make straps. Fundamentally, they use the same raw materials, but they spit out different finished products. So they're parts of different business units. They also may be different verticals. I may make screws that go to commercial construction companies. I may make bolts that go to aerospace, and I may make straps that go to the steel industry. But they're still all business units within the same company, which is Acme. Now, there are two types of needs that these plants have if they're going to digitally transform their business. They have the enterprise needs, okay, the ones that come from Acme, and we're just gonna call those the checkbox needs. Those are the ones that everyone's gotta have. The plant has to have these solutions. It could be something as simple as collecting temperature and climate data and bringing that information back to the cloud as well as downloading work orders from the ERP system and tracking production from the floor. That would be our checkbox enterprise needs. So the second type of need is the stuff that's unique to the business unit. So if I'm gonna develop an enterprise solution and I'm gonna solve problems for the plants and I'm gonna do it as an enterprise class, then I have to be able to address both of these. The needs that came from corporate, the ones that come from up above, from the enterprise, and the needs that the plant knows that they need. This could be totally different things, things unique to the process here. Let's say this is a machining, right? This is a lathe process where the customer is machining ends that are gonna go on cables. And here I'm producing bolts for the aerospace industry. Those are two completely unique processes. I still need to download work orders. I still need to run my production. I still need to track my OEE, but I also have things that are unique to the the lathe process that I want to track. If I'm going to develop an enterprise class solution and I'm thinking like a software developer, I have to account for both of these, okay? That's important. So let's talk about, there's basically two steps to developing an enterprise class system. The first step, we call it the design step. And then the second step is the deployment step. If you wanna get into doing enterprise class systems, you're gonna take this approach. You have to take the approach as a software developer. So when we design an enterprise class, in this case, MES solution, we go through these steps. We do the concept. That concept is gonna be collecting information from corporate, then we're gonna design it then we are going to develop. In this case, I'm just gonna to skip to prototype. We're gonna prototype it, so just for space. Then we're gonna redesign based on what we learned. Then we're going to pilot it, and then we're gonna send it to production, okay? When we develop an enterprise class solution, when we're designing the solution, we're only working on the checkbox stuff. This is the way that it always goes. When you go to a large organization, whether you're going to Ford or General Motors or whether you're going to Pepsi Cola or whether you're going to Nucor Steel, when you're developing an enterprise class MES system for any of those companies, when you first start developing that solution, remember you're only developing the checkbox stuff because the plants and the business units, while they may have had a say when this was designed, the people on the floor didn't and that's gonna be your challenge. So the second phase is deployment. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my production ready solution and I'm gonna put it on the floor. All right, so deployments. So now we're gonna deploy. We're gonna deploy our production ready, our production ready enterprise MES system. Remember that when we built this, this is theoretically what the business units and what the plant needs, okay? Corporate told us what they wanted. We've developed that solution. We've talked with the plants, but we haven't talked with the operators yet. We haven't gone to the real world. Deployment is real world. So the first thing we're gonna do when we start deploying these solutions, integrating these, this is what most integrators do. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do, we go through the planning phase. Oftentimes this is gonna be both your pilot and your deployment. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plan our deployment, then we're gonna do two 
developments here. We're gonna deploy our production ready solution. So when we start integrating our MES system, we have both our production ready system that came from corporate, the theory, that's the checkbox stuff, and then all of the other stuff, the new features. I'll get to that in a second. That's the exclamation point, the stuff we didn't plan for. You wanna know the roadblocks you run into when you're developing enterprise class systems? It's that. It's the delta between what was the theoretical need and the actual need. So that's the new features functionality. The next thing we do is now we go ahead and we integrate and we deploy our system. We integrate the system, we connect to the machines on the floor. This is where IIoT comes in. We connect to the machines on the floor and we connect it to the MES system. Then we do a review and we may go back and reintegrate. We do a review with the stakeholders in the business unit and we reintegrate. And after that review is when all hell breaks loose. Hell begins. Why? The answer to that question is the exclamation point. Hell begins because that's the delta between what we theoretically thought they wanted and what they actually want. The business units are never going to accept the theoretical optimum. So these items always come from two places. You have corporate down, corporate pushes down the needs, and the business unit pushes up the needs. And the optimal solution is right in the middle. It's one that incorporates both of the solutions. So if you're gonna develop an enterprise class solution, you have to be able to account for this delta because you're gonna start with the top down and you are going to incorporate the bottom up. Oftentimes, there are two ways to do these deployments. They either get initiated from corporate, some great idea from the board, pushes down the need, or the idea comes from the business unit and they push that up to corporate and then you develop an enterprise class solution. It's very difficult to try and put this concept concept in a 10 minute video. So we're gonna break it down a little bit further in later videos. What I wanna do is drive home the needs here again. One of the biggest pitfalls you run into in deploying an enterprise class solution is if it's your first time deploying an enterprise class solution, you'll go through this entire process here, everything will be hunky-dory. Then you go and you go to deploy to the plant for the first time. You go through the planning, you show them, think of what you've developed here as an off-the-shelf piece of software that the plant itself is gonna use. You go through planning. During in the planning phase, you outline in the black box all of the requirements that all the real smart people who developed it came up with. And then the plant informs you, the exclamation point, of all the features they have to have in order for them to use it. And those are the feature requests. We like to call those the deal breakers. So what ends up happening is you've spent money developing this solution, this enterprise class solution, whether you're developing an MES system in Ignition, whether you're using Wonderware's MES system, and it doesn't have to be MES, I'm just using it as the example in the stack. It's the best one to use in this case actually. But you've spent a lot of money developing this solution and now you go onto the plant floor, you wanna have a successful deployment. And what ends up happening is in the planning phase, you find out the difference between what the smart people thought they needed and what they actually want. In this phase here, in the review phase, is when they tell you these exclamation features are deal breakers. You gotta figure out a way to develop them into this solution you've already built. And that's where the software development life cycle comes in. That's why you have to think like a software developer. If you try to deploy an enterprise class solution thinking like a controls engineer or thinking like a standard automation engineer where I've got a single scope of work and a sequence of operations, I've got my controls theory and I'm gonna go ahead and write my PLC program and then I'm gonna do my IO checklist and then I'm gonna do my FAT and I'm gonna walk away. What's gonna happen is you're gonna fail over and over and over and over again. You have to go in with an agile mindset understanding that what you develop in the enter for the enterprise class system is fluid. This is just the foundation. The requirements that were initially defined are the base requirements. Once you start deploying in the plant, now we start getting to brass tacks. That's when the plant starts telling us there's a whole host of features they gotta have that we haven't given them yet. And you gotta be prepared. You have to have a methodology. You have to have a mindset so that you can give them those. What do you wanna talk about in the next video? So the next video will be, so this is step two of the foundation. For us to be able to teach people who haven't developed an IIoT implementation yet, we have to lay the foundation for the mindset you have to have going into that development, okay? These first two videos are just laying that groundwork. That is, A, we have to think like software developers, and B, we have to be prepared for the challenges you're gonna face when you're doing IIoT. Why? Because IIoT is always enterprise class. There's no such thing as an IIoT solution that isn't enterprise class. In order for you to do an IIoT implementation, you also have to be able to do enterprise class. And so we're laying that foundation here. So what we're gonna do in the next video is we're gonna talk about what's the difference between Industry 4.0 and IIoT, and then I wanna touch on a couple of the other protocols that we haven't 
talked about yet. And what do those other protocols have relative to MQTT and the IoT protocols that we're advocating for, okay?